The Game of Thrones finale left a lot of viewers asking questions, and now some of them have been answered thanks to the release of the episode's script. Here's a look at some of the most surprising small details uncovered in its pages. After the Game of Thrones finale aired, fans hurried online to try and find an answer to one huge, lingering question about the destruction of the Iron Throne. Did Drogon intentionally destroy the Iron Throne because he recognized it as the reason for Daenerys' downfall? Or was he just a big, dumb animal lashing out? Turns out that big dragon is just a big, dumb animal. In the script, showrunners David Benioff and D.B. Weiss wrote that Drogon wanted to burn the world, saying, "...we look over Jon's shoulder as the fire sweeps toward the throne, not the target of Drogon's wrath, just a dumb bystander caught up in the conflagration." So for anyone looking for some kind of meaning in these events, there isn't any. One thing that chapped a lot of hides was the fact that we never got a sense of what Daenerys was feeling or thinking after she went on her rampage in the penultimate episode. The finale script unfortunately doesn't offer any insight either. From the moment Jon enters the throne room in her final scene, the script doesn't give any hint of Danny's point of view, focusing entirely on Jon Snow. Fans who were upset at Daenerys' lack of dialogue during the Siege of King's Landing probably won't be any happier knowing the Dragon Queen didn't even get an inner monologue while she was being stabbed to death. Over the course of the show, Daenerys certainly acquired plenty of lofty titles. You stand in the presence of Daenerys Stormborn of House Targaryen, rightful heir to the Iron Throne, rightful Queen of the Andals and the First Men. Like, a lot of them. Protector of the Seven Kingdoms. The Mother of Dragons, the Khaleesi of the Great Grass Sea, the Unburnt, the Breaker of Chains." But while many fans were calling her the Mad Queen at the end, just as her father before her was the Mad King, the script actually gave her a more unexpected title during the finale, Her Satanic Majesty. Yep, while describing the scene where Danny lords over her conquered city, the script read, "...for a moment, Drogon's unfolding wings spread behind her back, an unsettling image." Her Satanic Majesty's Request. That's actually a reference to the 1967 Rolling Stones album, Their Satanic Majesty's Request, which contains a lot of trippy imagery. One of the most haunting sequences in the Game of Thrones finale is Tyrion's long walk through the ruins of King's Landing. Benioff and Weiss deliberately packed this part of the script with cultural and historical references to give it added oomph. The focus on Tyrion's face, for instance, was inspired by the 2015 Holocaust drama Son of Saul. The script read, "...we follow him Son of Saul style, tight on his face as he passes through the gates." And a few lines later, the directions reference another tragedy from World War II, the atomic bombing of Hiroshima, Japan, saying, "...human silhouettes on the dragon-scorched ground where the ashes have blown away, the negative image of the Hiroshima silhouettes." One place the script does provide important nuance is that weird council meeting where the heads of the noble families of Westeros somehow ended up electing Bran as king. It seemed a bit random to many fans, but the script provides some much-needed explanation as to why the council voted that way. Edmure Tully, Bran's uncle, is miffed he wasn't given serious consideration, but he expects he'll have influence at court if his crippled nephew is ruling. Meanwhile, Gendry is, quote, "...happy to go along," while Yara Greyjoy has apparently "...heard that her brother died defending Bran. She knows this choice would make Theon happy." Finally, Brienne of Tarth is, quote, "...a Stark loyalist." One person who doesn't get a lot of development? That random new Prince of Dorne, who is such a non-entity that even the script doesn't bother giving him a name. Sorry, whoever you are. If you thought it was weird that Bran became king, well, Weiss and Benioff agreed, as the script itself noted more than once how odd this plot twist was. Remember when Tyrion offered him the crown? Will you wear the crown? Why do you think I came all this way? In the script, it then said, A strange response, but Tyrion has come to expect strange answers from Bran. Then, in the small council meeting, after asking where Drogon is, Bran drops this. Perhaps I can find him. In the script, this is followed by a note reading. That's weird, but so is the new king. Also weird? The fact that Sam is wearing Grand Maester robes even though he never completed his training. But the script makes it clear that he is indeed a Grand Maester despite his limited qualifications. When Sam enters the small council chamber, the script notes, "...he wears the Grand Maester robes and a chain with a single healing link." At least someone in the show got a happy ending. 
At the end of the show, Jon Snow was exiled to the far north as he rejoins the Night's Watch. We end the series with Jon and his wildling friends wandering past the Wall. Considering there seems to be no reason to even have a Night's Watch anymore, that led some fans to think he was taking his place as the King Beyond the Wall. But the script seems to suggest he's just a regular schmo, as it unequivocally calls him a Night's Watchman rather than a King. Considering the fate of most monarchs on the show, though, that's probably for the best. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.